Um, <clears throat> now, you said you did sculptures, right? Before. Oh, yeah. I'm a sculptor. And, and is that part, one, one piece right there? Well, this is a piece that I did for myself. Okay. I was mostly did contract pieces for, for collectible companies for years. And uh, in 2004, um, the collectible industry uh, was not hot any longer. So I just decided to do my own thing. I've, uh, this, this is a piece called Deep Strings. It's solid bronze. It uh, sort of, um, I paint for my imagination. Um, I'm uh, a little bit uh, quirky, a little bit twisted, and uh, very much a surrealist. I, uh, this is an homage to the world I left behind because in this little teeny studio, uh, you haven't looked around much, but there are three guitars and an amp. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you know, uh, I'll be a rocker till the day I die. So this was an homage to the uh, band life I left behind when I left Woodstock, New York. Anyway, I'm an art machine. I'm a painter. I paint in watercolors and acrylics. I'm a sculptor. Um, and um, Do you still sculpt? Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, the last piece I did was a wonderful commission piece for... Um, the, the DEA, that's the Detectives Endowment, excuse me. No, you're fine. I'll add this. No big deal. Okay, go on. The Detectives Endowment Association of the NYPD Detectives. And I was commissioned to do a bronze sculpture commemorating uh, the life of their beloved uh, union leader, uh -huh. Vice President John Jack Healy. We had a dedication. It was a, it's a beautiful piece. It's how, a large bronze plaque. How big was it? It is 30 inches long by 20 inches wide. Okay. And it hangs in the Jack Healy Memorial Lounge at the DEA headquarters at 6th and Thomas Street. Uh, if you go to their website, um, which is nycdetectives.org, and I think that the apostrophe is after the S in detectives to get it right. You can see the photographs of the dedication there. I'm very proud of that. Um, and uh, they also have a link to my website, which is kind of interesting <laughs> <laughs> because um, I'm very diverse yeah. in, in the product that I'm, a, 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 in my ability, the, the, what I can uh, accomplish. I've sculpted presidents. I've sculpted... Um, uh, leaders, I've sculpted dictators, and I also uh, do whimsical and fanciful art. Um, I can paint realistically and sculpt realistically, or, or I can do uh, interesting imaginative things. Now, um, how did they find you? Uh, well, somebody knew somebody knew somebody. Okay, so, so that's they, the way. word of mouth. You get a lot of work through referral. When I did, when I worked, I, I'm highly credentialed because of my collectible career. Right. And and extremely uh, able to produce a piece from an inception to completion, no matter what's involved and entailed, whether it's a painting portrait, whether it's a, an imaginative piece where people, where I realize somebody else's. Um, dream of what a piece should look like right. or whether people want me to run with it and just create something because I'm so experienced yes. at doing all of those things. So I, for years and years, I got most of my work through reputation. I had a following in the collectible industry and um, uh, when they found me, I you know, submitted a drawing uh, and a proposal and a price proposal and um, and uh, they approved it and decided to go with me. And uh, when it comes to portraiture, uh, in the clay, I took the portrait up to New York City to be approved by the people who hired me. And uh, they loved it. And then I drove it onto the foundry. So um, I, can accomplish, I, I can accomplish a lot for someone who might want me to do a commission piece for them. I see. I was going to ask you, do you do commissions still? Absolutely. Whether yeah. it's 2D, like flat art, right. or three-dimensional, or bas-relief sculpture, which is how I did the plaque. The style of sculpture is called bas-relief. And that's two-dimensional. That looks very three-dimensional. 
It's kind of like like, like a, a coin, right? It's like a coin, but I used a much higher relief, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Same process. Right. Same process. But um, for a plaque, I was able not to have to worry about the same limitations that I did when I was sculpting uh, commemorative coins. That's very, very specific. R right. And, and, and uh, when you're making coins, I know there's a process of you do a great big coin first and they, they well, do you that do it about you do it um a number of times up yeah yeah you do you do the original uh i would do the original say on a nine inch plaster right which means you have a basin and then i would put down the clay and i was restricted by the amount of depth that i could give it so i had to have to do something that was very in actu all actuality very low relief very flat but when you held it up was very, very three-dimensional looking. You know, you're playing with light. Right. It was a lot of light play. From that, eventually, by going back and forth through the casting process, you produce a, a relief sculpture that is an epoxy. And what they do is they take that hard epoxy and they put it on a machine called the panograph uh. with, a, with, a, with a tracing tool. Yeah, it goes around circles. And yeah, yeah. It's, quite, it's quite the process. It takes a very long time. Right. And it's scaled down on the other end to a diamond, um, a diamond pointed needle, cutting it into a block of steel called a hub. That's how they get it to come down. So um, your original piece that you know that I would finish would be scaled down dramatically from a nine inch. Uh, plaque to a, the size of a coin that you see. Right. From that hub, they press it into soft steel and create a die. And then they harden it. You know, they anneal it and harden it. Right. That die, this is the shortcut, that die will go on a press. And that press will stamp out the coins. The you, medallions, the coins, your money, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you still have the, uh, the coins that you... Abs boxes of them. Boxes. <laughs> <laughs> the artist samples. I've had yeah. quite the career. I have many, 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 many artist samples yeah. you know, over the years. A lot of them I couldn't get, you know, but uh, I could get a lot of them. And you're working in the lead time when a lot of things that I did in the collectible industry was, it could be years. Um, aside from doing uh, commemorative coins in foreign currency, I would do pewter and porcelain figurines. This is a piece that I did. It's, a, it's porcelain. It is a three-dimensional reproduction of John William Waterhouse's Lady of Shallot. And I did the whole original sculpture, and that includes all the little things that go on it, the candlesticks, the crucifixes, and um, that's what I was hired to do. And then I send the original piece, and I, I do it in pieces so that it all will fit together when they decide, when they want to produce it, and they can put it together. Right. And... Um, uh, when the, when it comes it goes out of my hands, it is hardened, and it is gray clay. When I get it back, the final artist sample, it's been it's been, you know it's been cast, dumped as we call it in porcelain. It has been decoed. They have other people to do that, and it has been marketed all over the world. And okay, for instance, okay, I you probably don't know how much you, you, they charged. I mean, you charge them to do that model, right? Well, the original model. Yeah. I love the collectible industry. I think I got eighty-five hundred dollars to do that sculpture. And how long did that take you? Uh, a long time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, that's just the way it is. But you know, when I was in the sculpt, when I was in the collectible industry, um, I didn't have one piece going. I could have three or four pieces going. Right. That's why I'm an art machine. Yeah. I, uh, I work and I work all the time and I hold myself up in here and I